with a set like this, a lot of times you can use a backing. You want to dig that hole in the ground at about a 45 degree angle. That brings the animal around to the front to look at what's in the hole or to smell it. So the, the hole's dug at about a 45 degree angle. But also you can use some sort of a backing. Now I can use a piece of sod. I can use a flat rock. Lots of times I like to hide that hole a little bit with a piece of sod or a flat rock. Maybe a, an old stump such as this, something like that. It can be put this way for a little added attraction. This actually looks a little better for this application. And the final thing we'll do, we take off our gloves. We want no scent of urine, lure, or odor on our gloves. Now it's time to apply the lure. I'm going to use a coyote glen lure on a piece of sheep wool. This could also be a piece of rabbit fur, any kind of fur, a cotton ball, a, a wad of dead grass made to look like a mouse nest. Then I'm also going to have um, some coyote food lure applied to this food or gland, either one. And I'll be careful not to get any lure or anything like that over my dirt pattern. So I'll work this kind of close to the edge of the hole. This could be handled with your bare hands because the odor of this lure is going to overpower your human scent. Goes down into the hole like that. And we'll use a stick to work that down into the hole. May have to break this stick off, but that's okay. That's plenty of odor coming out of that hole. In this, in this particular set, I'm going to use coyote urine. I'll give it a, just a little spray right on the back of the backing. You've got two combinations of odor there, plus eye appeal from the hole and the wool down in the hole. So uh, that should attract a coyote's attention. The last thing I'll do is take a call lure, and I'll apply it up into this tree here on some wool that I've got about five feet off the ground. Lots of times this call lure will have different ingredients in it, like musks. Skunk musk is a big ingredient in call lure because it carries a long way. What I'm doing is putting this lure up on this. This is a lure holder, and this could be a cotton ball. It could be any kind of fur, just anything to hold that. That lure will carry out with the wind and call these animals in from a farther distance than just the odor it might set. Plus, it's a, di a different and a secondary smell. Okay, what we have here is another set for coyotes. This is another common set, a uh, very successful set, and it's called a flat set. Um, all this is is a set right on the coyote's travelway. They're traveling along the borders, the, the corner borders of this electric fence, and the, there's some high grass here and short grass between here and the fence, which is only about five feet, so we know the coyote's going to be coming through here. There's nothing really to attract this coyote's attention except this skull and a little bit of lure odor. What we've done here, we've nailed this skull to the ground so that they can't pick it up and carry it off. We've used a large gutter spike and nailed that to the ground. And down in the brain cavity of this skull, right here, I'm going to point this out with this bone, right in here, we've got a little bit of wool with a little bit of gland lure on it. So any coyote coming by here, he's going to notice that skull, he's going to smell that odor, and he's going to at least come and check it out. This is another, just another real simple but deadly set for coyotes. And um, I'd like to have, anytime I make a set for coyotes, I like to make multiple sets. Um, if a non-target animal gets caught, I've still got a couple traps working for the next coyote that comes along. And it's often possible to catch two and three coyotes uh, in a pass-through if you've got multiple sets located. Just because there's a road and there's a house, don't think that the coyotes cannot be coming through that area. Right here in this position, with the house, with the state road here, I've taken out five or six coyotes. And if you're trapping that close to the road, you do not want to have the coyote hanging across the top of a fence on account of uh, the lux of it. So you use what they call a cable where the animal can get away from where you catch him. The cable, the snare cable, is short enough that the coyote cannot get tangled. You would set it as it was described earlier on how to set one. You would set it at this position. 
But the big difference is when you catch him, he comes back this way and he can travel this way on down. But if he tries to come back, it locks and he cannot pull himself up. If you can take your slide and put him in behind the brush in a ditch, completely out of sight of people, but also it doesn't tear up your set here. As soon as you get rid of him, you can bring your uh, snare back up, put a new snare on it, and you're ready to go again. There's no damage done at this point, and nobody sees your animal. <laughs> When they come down to this fence row, they've made a scoot under, and they'll slide under that fence to get down this ridge to go hunting, mousing, or wherever they're going uh, for the night. And this is a good place to set your snares or your steel trap, either one. Preferably, I would, I would prefer a snare in a situation like this. When he goes through it, he'll pull it out of that, that tie wire or hold wire, and then he'll, it'll tighten up on him, just like a choker chain on a dog. As far as getting uh, getting rid of the coyotes, when you when you catch them, I always kill mine. A lot of people they say we'll take them and and turn them loose somewhere else, but I don't do that. I, I dispatch every one of them because I feel like that you're taking your problem and putting it on somebody else and causing another problem. We have coyotes here. We hear them when I'm mowing hay. I see them quite often. Uh, I kid them. My neighbor that says we got a truce, so they're not bothering me and I don't bother them. The farmers, you know, they they they're busy, I know, in the in the spring of the year and the fall of the year during calving time and when they have their coyotes problems most. But if they'll take a little time and uh, run their traps early in the morning and uh, set them in the evenings and then run them early in the morning, they can, you know, get around to them pretty quick on a four-wheeler or something. We check our cows twice a day, morning and night, sometimes three times a day. And it's best to do that and, and keep them as close to the barn or the house that you know you can keep an eye on them and watch what's going on with them. So if you've got a problem, whether you trap it, you have a trapper come in, or you hire a professional to come in, it can happen overnight and it can happen a year later when your problem is solved. Because usually there's only one or maybe two coyotes and that whole pack that's causing a problem, until you eliminate them, your problem is still there. My traps work at night when I'm asleep. 